Hello again, Scott here, and I want you to draw out this pictorial diagram and wire it up. It's a good idea to draw this out real nice one time, just get it in good detail, make a bunch of photocopies, and then get you some colored pencils or pens, markers, and just keep trying to wire this pictorial diagram up. If you can do this, then you want to take that knowledge and take it to an actual unit. But uh, first, be able to wire this up completely. Go ahead and hit pause and try to wire this up. And hopefully, you've gotten this far by now because you hit pause and took all the time you needed. And this is your low voltage circuit all wired up and this is your outdoor condenser wired up to both the condenser fan motor and the compressor. Let's finish it out. Open that so we can edit. L1 power to go into this switch here. Here's our 120 volt power going in. And we are going to run this to the heat sequencer. And three, well, three is going to go to your high fan. This off the heat sequencer is going to your low fan. We also have stage one heat. And that could have gone to either one, maybe the other one. We have stage two heat. I still need to get L2 all the way over there, don't I? Or L1, I mean. Gotta run that around this way. It's just a wire. Here. Connect. And I gotta connect my L2. I can grab that from just about anywhere. I can actually grab the L2 just on this little board here. If I wanted to, I could actually daisy chain it. That. Because it's L2. As long as it makes its way back to L2. Well, maybe not on the contactor because the contactor is going to break every time the contactor is not on. So we can just run it back any old way. is your load to L2. It will find its way back from all those sources. I could run these all individually back to L2 as well. Or I could run an L2 line up to here somewhere and make a terminal block and then tie all the L2s into that. The main thing is is that L2 stays on the same side. But that's not what we did. Alright, so go ahead and draw it out, and uh, when you can draw this out, then you're ready to maybe make a simulation board and do it for real with wiring. Maybe go out to your outdoor unit, disconnect the power, and try hooking up your wires, take out your components, pull out your contactor, see if it's good and clean, maybe get your little brass wire brush, like a little brass toothbrush and just clean those components. Uh, dirty contactors, corrosion, that, that's one of the biggest faults out there that you're going to find. 
and then these things do go bad. The coals overheat, ants get in there, and they tend to fry them out too. So it's a little cheap part you can get from Granger, buy it online, go to a supply house, and change it out. Your fan relay is going to be on the indoor unit, or you're going to have a solid state device, a little computer chip, computer circuit board. But outside, this is still pretty standard. And we haven't talked about capacitors yet. There are some videos on capacitors out there. Um, when we get into motors, we start talking about capacitors. But basically, if you start seeing this swell, you need to change it out. This is a start capacitor, which is going to be plastic. This is a run capacitor. You may not have a start capacitor, just a run capacitor. Um, your compressor and your fan motor are going to have a, have a capacitor. You might have one that's called a dual cap. We can get into that later. Mainly you need to, to right now just focus on being able to wire up the pictorial diagram. This is your high and low circuit for your air conditioning system. And this is the fundamentals. Now, we, we can add to it. We can add a lot to it. But fundamentally what you have going on is that right there. Now, I'm going to put a start capacitor on there. I'm actually going to have uh, another leg. Oh, that gets confusing. It's probably too much, but basically um, a star capacitor is another winding, and we hook up power, and we phase it with the capacitor. So we we have actually a third winding. There's a third winding, and we run that there, and we put this little capacitor on it, and that's going to phase. That's going to phase that uh, power and it essentially helps it start. Small motors, very small fans do not need this third leg and they do not need a start a, a capacitor to help get it started a third leg. It's actually called a run capacitor because it's on the system and it stays hot while the system's running, but it essentially helps this motor start up. It offsets the power kind of like uh, offsetting pedals on a bicycle and helps it get going. Without that, we could energize this fan and we could go out there like the old prop propeller planes, we could start spinning it and that thing would start going based on our assistance. But if you want to get that motor going, hook up this third set of windings and put on the run capacitor and that'll help get these started. You can also hook up all kinds of safeties on the system. We can put a, sa a safety sensor in here that senses how much heat we're putting out and we could design that to say, hey, if that's getting too hot, I want it to shut off the power, and it'll break that line. It'll stay closed unless that hits a certain temperature, and then it'll pop open because it senses too much heat. You could have another one that, that works in a way that uh, senses for water somewhere. Maybe underneath the evaporator pan, you, you, you sense that water is not draining properly and it could be out there as well and you could decide to have that cut off and probably have that cut off the whole system but anywhere you want to tie it in there you can have it cut off the, the compressor alone you can have it cut off the condenser but you basically tie it into the, the circuit and have it open up when it senses too much water you can put other safeties in there as well you can put a safety on here that senses that, hey, if this fan's not running, if I don't sense air movement, this would be a special sensor just sensing the airflow. If I don't sense that airflow, I'm cutting off the power. I'm cutting off the heat. I'm cutting off these heat strips. That um, so many different safeties. The safeties are normally closed, and they open up if there's something that it senses is wrong. It opens up, breaks the circuit and then you your system stops running alright that will conclude this little lesson hopefully you're drawing out that pictorial and uh, next we should get into the ladder diagrams and run through those alright thanks a bunch